When we use data to develop machine learning models, we often train and test models on examples from heterogeneous populations that have different characteristics. To see why this can be problematic, consider the following example. We want to use machine learning to learn a model that is able to predict whether or not a person in this stadium will experience chronic traumatic encephalopathy, a condition that results from repetitive brain injury. While a model trained on all the people in the stadium might work well overall, it may not work as well for a specific subpopulation, for example, the football players on the field, who likely experience repetitive brain injury more frequently than others in the stadium. In many cases, the entire dataset is treated as a single population using a single global model. Doing so risks fitting a model for the majority and underperforming on groups that are more different or underrepresented. Another option that accounts for differences between groups is to build separate models for each subpopulation. But this means that there might be insufficient data to train a separate model for each individual population. And in some cases, we might not even know what relevant subpopulations are present in the data. In our work, we examine these issues in the context of patient populations in the intensive care unit. Patients in intensive care can present with a variety of conditions. For example, these might include a fever indicating a possible infection, broken bone, or a heart condition that requires surgery. To address these problems, we propose to first discover distinct cohorts from the underlying data using unsupervised clustering. We cluster patients based on a learned representation of their physiological time series. This means that patients who progress in physiologically similar ways will cluster together. The learned cohorts can be used in a multitask learning framework, where each task is defined by cohort membership. This allows the model to use all the data when relevant, but still learn a distinct model for each task. We implement the multitask model using a neural network with shared layers, followed by task-specific layers. In other words, the function mapping a patient to an outcome consists of both shared parameters and task-specific parameters. For examples belonging to a different cohort, predictions are made using the same shared parameters, but different task-specific parameters corresponding to that cohort. Finally, we highlight the importance of granular evaluation methods. Evaluating our model separately on each patient population allows us to understand on which populations our model performs better and on which populations our model underperforms. Typical evaluation methods consider the performance over the entire test set, and this can obscure performance on different populations. Thank you for listening, and for more information, please check out our paper.